This is an earthquake recording station. It's part of a seismic warning system established in 1946 by the United States Coast and Geodetic Survey. Seems a strange place for a true account of psychic phenomena to begin, doesn't it? But it's not so strange, really. Our research has taught us that unexplainable events can occur anywhere, at any time. But that they tend particularly to occur when the human mind and heart come in conflict with cataclysmic events or emotions. Still nothing very cataclysmic seems to be happening here. But then disaster often begins quietly, doesn't it? Like this. Saturday, May 21st, 1960. Place, Chile. 15 miles beneath ground level, the earth gives a twitch and 1,500 persons die. Nine volcanoes come to life in the winter cold. At Rupanco, a landslide buries 113. At Keilen, 630 are drowned. In the following week, 12 earthquakes are recorded. The largest, the sixth, is measured on the Richter scale at 8.5, slightly greater than the San Francisco quake of 1906. Then tragedy compounds tragedy. Off the southern coast, an underwater slippage occurs. The result? Tidal waves. The Japanese call them tsunami, seismic sea waves. Moving at 425 miles an hour, the crest of no more than three feet, they're quite harmless until they reach solid land. First land ahead, Hawaii. What's the distance between crests now? Woodruff? Yeah. What's the crest separation? Between 80 and 100 miles, but they're getting closer. Speed? 420 to 500. 6,800 miles. Say 420 an hour. 16 hours to Hilo. I radioed a 12-hour alert. Do you want to repeat? Order evacuation. Well, you're always streaming for a bigger surf, Beach Boy. No more, buddy. No more. For a day and half a night, the Pacific rolls toward Hilo like a tablecloth being shaken for crumbs. Then it strikes its beach. Four large waves from six to 15 feet in height struck the Hilo waterfront within one hour early this morning. Despite warnings, eight persons are reported missing, 56. Damage is estimated at $50 million. I gotta get that thing fixed. I think I'll take it down Saturday. You do that. Yeah, well, this time I mean it. Good. One of these days, I'll walk in here with a brand new one. And you'll just keel over. Hmm. Em. Yeah? Why didn't the waves hit us here in Honolulu? Well, they did. No, I mean harder. Well, I guess uh, Hilo must have taken some of the snap out of them. We might not get off so easy the next time. All those people. Hmm. 
What a sky. Hey, you know, this might not be a bad day to take off. Well, uh, I thought you fellows were so busy down there. Well, what's the sense of living on the edge of an ocean if you can't get a little fun out of it? You do like it here, don't you, honey? Will you stop worrying about me? You don't mind being alone? No! Well, I wish you and some of the neighbors around here would get acquainted. Oh, just give it time. Well, aren't you supposed to be out baking cookies for each other and fooling around with cucumber sandwiches, all that sort of thing? And we just moved in! Did you ride? I heard it. Now, look. You know the number out there. It's number... Yes, Em, I know the number. And if you get lonesome, the neighbor on that side is named Friar. Yes, Mama. You'll be good now. Oh, I'm safe enough here. We picked a good place to live in. For a couple of lucky bums. <laughs> Goodbye, bum. Wednesday, May 25th, 1960. Mrs. Emmett North, polio victim, is alone on what is to become the longest day of her life. The time, 7.56 a.m. Here's another one. Market 756. What's the wave measure? Big and growing. This was supposed to be a baby. She picked up speed, hitting about 480 now. That'll put her at the islands around noon. Or a little later. Send out the alert. What about evacuation? Tell them we'll watch it and let them know. How long can it last, Lenny? Lord knows. By 9 o'clock, civil defense authorities have received and evaluated the seismic warning information and have again gone on the air. All persons in low-lying coastal areas throughout the islands are alerted for possible evacuation. Inevitably, there are some who fail to hear the warning. This, however, is to be expected. The alert will be repeated at half-hour intervals. If evacuation becomes necessary, the sirens will sound. But there are some who will not even hear the sirens. In Kailua, on the east coast of Oahu, a retired naval commander named Thomas A. Powers prepares to make the leisurely 10-mile trip into Honolulu to visit an old friend. Commander Powers is the guest of Captain H.L. Morgan. He's unfamiliar with Honolulu. And he is deaf. Are you sure you've got the address? What? I say, have you got the address? I don't want you to get lost. Certainly, I've got the address. And you don't have to scream at me. I can hear better than you think I can. You couldn't hear Big Bertha if it went off in your ear. What? I said... Never mind. Well, if you're going to say something, say it. I'm late now. Go on, go on. I'll be back for dinner. Take your time. What? I said fine, Tom. Fine. All right, fine. Dearest Rebecca, I expect by now you've heard about our tidal wave. Hilo was terribly hit. But the danger, thank heaven, is past. Emmett is now working as 
a project engineer for the Navy. He's clear across the island, and I'm as lonesome as if as if he were on the moon. Hey, North! Oh, Where? What are you doing way out here? Who's keeping the store? Oh, I got a couple of admirals taking calls for me. <laughs> Good man. Hey, did you hear the news? Oh, what news? That's a new tidal wave coming. Another one? Yeah, there's nothing to worry about. We're okay. Oh, no, no, it's not me. It's my wife. She's all alone. Well, you got neighbors, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll look after her. Yeah. Look, uh, they're asking everybody to stay off the phones, but I'll check, see how she's getting along, okay? Would you, Dick? I'd sure appreciate it. Sure. Now, relax. There's nothing to worry about. It's probably just the usual warning. In fact, there's probably a false alarm. I'll see you. Relax. It's just the usual warning. No real danger. Evacuate. Civil defense. Evacuate. I just now heard of, of the new alert. Well, I, I, I'm alone here, and I'm in a wheelchair, and I have, I have no way of getting out of the house. Well, I... Yes, I can walk a little, but... But, but you see, if, if I fall down, I can't get up again. Well, I can't go up and down steps. I, I understand that. Who can I call? Just, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. All right, go ahead. Civil Defense Authority. Number 52571. Thank you. Thank you. 52571. Oh. 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 Shut up. Just shut up! There is in Honolulu one person whom the sound of the siren does not bother. The retired commander, Thomas Powers, can't hear it. And in addition to everything else, he is now hopelessly lost.
Oh, hi, Mrs. North. I just about to call you. Is Emmett there? Uh, no, he isn't. He's out checking on a job. Oh. You okay, Mrs. North? Well, I... I can't seem to get anybody. I, I... I can't get the taxi, the police, or anybody. Well, look, uh... I'm gonna call Pearl Harbor and have the Navy send somebody out to you. Uh, they should be there in about, uh, 20 minutes. The alert said the wave was going to hit in 10 minutes. Hmm. Yeah, uh, let's see now. Well, how about your neighbors? Oh, oh, what's wrong with me? Of course, of course, yes. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Nord, now you get in touch with your neighbors. And, uh, well, if they're gone or something, well, you call me right back. But if I don't hear from you, I'll know that you're all right. Yes, Dick, yes, thank you, thank you. Operator, I, I just moved in here, and I, I want to call my neighbor, but I, I don't have her number. Her name, yes, it's, it's, uh, uh, uh Pryor. Uh, uh, Forrest, uh, something like that, I, I can't remember. I, uh, well, I, now, 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 listen, you, you're supposed to help me. I know you're busy, but... I can't walk that far! Never mind! Oh, please. Wait, 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 wait. what I keep telling you. She's gone with the neighbors. Now, we had it all worked out. If she hadn't been able to reach somebody, she was going to call me. Oh, yeah, but these lines have been pretty busy, Dick. Well, now, look, Em, if she was there, she'd answer, wouldn't she? Yeah, she must be all right. That's what I keep telling you. I hope so.
12.24. The white sloping beaches. The waterfront towns. The bustling streets are quiet, cleared, waiting. each other's lives, didn't they? In a most miraculous fashion, indeed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that you'll be very happy to meet Mrs. Margaret North of 169 East Hind Drive, Honolulu, Hawaii, to whom the story you have just seen actually happened. Mrs. North, what happened to you really was a miracle, wasn't it? Yes, indeed it was a psychic miracle. A psychic miracle. Have you had any other psychic experiences? I think I may say that I have had other experiences, but nothing that was quite as dynamic as this, which saved two lives. Isn't that marvelous? Mrs. North, you're a believer, aren't you? Yes, I am a believer. I believe that we are surrounded, perhaps unconsciously, by influences that oft times determine our destiny. I must say that, that I do too. I do too. Well, that's the story. Now, reports and occasions of thought transference have been reported through the ages, since the beginning of recorded time, as a matter of fact. And new cases are being authenticated every day. But how it happens, and what makes it work, we don't know. Yet. But Mrs. North knows it does happen. In a moment, something about next week. <laughs> 